it's the fluorescence that really draws people in. They're very alien. That creates this different type of attraction, which can get people to care. My name is Colin Ford, and I'm a marine biologist and one half of Coral Morphologic. My name is Jared McKay, and I'm a artist and one half of Coral Morphologic. Coral Morphologic is all of the lessons that we as humans can learn from the coral to live more symbiotically with each other and nature. Coral, they've been on this planet for half a billion years. They've survived multiple extinctions. Then being able to translate that into a way that people can then understand some of these concepts that are literally coming from these invertebrate organisms. It's been really important for us to create the sense that you might not be underwater. You don't really know the, the sense of scale that you're dealing with. I was interested in studying these organisms because they needed to be studied, and nobody was studying them. Scientists still aren't 100% sure what evolutionary benefit this fluorescence offers the coral. Well, I started making music when I was a teenager. I taught myself how to play the guitar. After that, I started kind of fiddling around with keyboards, and that's kind of when it dovetailed into coral morphologic. Fortunately, Jared is a musician, and he and I have been in uh, bands together since high school. We really come from kind of like a, a punk rock DIY background. I started taking underwater photographs after I graduated um, University of Miami in 2004, right at the, the crux of the digital photography revolution. So we got the camera and we started Core Morphologic and we were focused mostly on photography. We recognized that there was an opportunity for us to be aquaculturing these animals to sustain and support our both scientific and artistic practice. In this tank, we are aquaculturing a type of soft coral called zoanthids. We've been able to determine through genetics that it is in fact a totally new species that is still undescribed by science. You know, if we owe any body or anything for whatever it is that we've done, it is, it is these corals. We're at Star Island right now. It's about 100 years old and it's a man-made island. corals that are growing here are literally growing on the trash and the refuse of the past hundred years of people living on this island. Corals, as they grow, they kind of cement over the, uh, the surrounding substrate and, and kind of bind it all together like, a, like concrete. You know, the first major coral reef uh, die-off on the planet started just offshore in Miami a little over 40 years ago. If you want to see the future of coral reefs, um, Miami is a, is, is, a, is a great place, both good and bad, because offshore, um, especially over the past five years, there's been a tremendous amount of die-off. There's new diseases that have wiped out um, nearly entire species. It's been pretty grim offshore on the natural reef. But somehow, here inside the city, in these urban waterways, there are places where we're finding corals recruiting and surviving to a much greater degree than those that are living offshore. So the corals are able to adapt and thrive in this, uh, in this environment. And the research that we're doing will hopefully illuminate you know, how corals around the world may be able to adapt in the future of the Anthropocene. It's made our life trying to raise awareness about corals a lot easier because these corals have these, these really a rainbow of colors taking the coral out of the traditional kind of underwater videography it allows people to open up their mind a little bit more. It may be the saving grace of these corals. Mm -hmm.